One thing that strikes me about the literature on corruption and rent-seeking and political influence is what is sometimes here called the Tulloch paradox. Gordon Tulloch you know, worked in this building. And Tulloch raised the question of, given how much is at stake in politics? In the US, it's about 40% of GDP. In Europe, it may be above 50% of GDP. Tulloch was actually surprised, in a way, relative to that, how little was spent on lobbying. So for him, there's some kind of structural barrier story. But what's your take on the Tulloch paradox? Why aren't we even more corrupt yet, given what percent of GDP in this country is allocated through mechanisms of a, a mix of force and democratic, whatever you want to call it, rather than voluntary exchange? Yeah, for, first of all, let, let me spend the word to praise Gordon Tulloch. Uh, I'm very sorry he passed away recently. And I'm even more sorry that he didn't, wasn't celebrated the way he deserved to be celebrated. In, in my view, he was an extremely insightful economist. Uh, who made the point of uh, there is not enough money in politics in 1972, if I'm, uh, I'm not mistaken. A long time ago, yeah. A long time ago, at a time where there was much less money in politics. So, first of all, he got clearly the derivative right, because from 1972 <laughs> to today, the amount of money in politics exploded. So, I think he was very far-sighted in understanding this. The second is, in my view, the reason why we don't see enough money is, is twofold. Number one, uh, there is ideology, uh, so you can't really pay everybody, but people have some preferences, especially when they're not paid a lot, uh, for some position. And so that decreases the power of, of money. But the most important fact mm -hmm. is that some people find it very easy to collect the money, which are vested interests. They organize because they're small. This is Manco Olson. They organize much faster. They can collect the money uh, faster. In uh, the public at large, find it difficult to collect the money. So uh, the, the paradox of Talok, the way I like to describe it, the Gordon, uh, Gordon Talok paradox is, is the following. Imagine you have some lottery tickets in which, unlike most lottery, in which the state gets most of it, uh, is pure sort of uh, actuarially fair. So uh, you know that uh, you are going to buy, uh, let's say, uh, $5 trillion is the payoff, and you start to, uh, to sell the tickets. You know that by buying all the tickets, for sure, you're going to get $5 trillion. So it seems that why the collective amount of tickets doesn't sell for $5 trillion. Sure. And that's basically what Talak is saying. He's saying, why, if we are purely cynical and we try to buy all the votes, uh, if you buy all the votes in Congress and for president, you get to allocate a lot of goodies. So that, that value, the value of the votes collected it should be at least the value of the rents you get on all the goodies you allocate, uh, which uh, we can discuss how much it is, but it's on the order of trillions of dollars. Okay? So the point is that uh, the public at large is not able to coordinate and bid very much for those votes. So those go votes sell cheap. Uh, why they sell cheap? Because the party are not well organized. Now, since the time of Gordon Tallow to today, people got more and more organized, and so the price is going up, but there is way to go. If we don't do something, there is way to go and spend more. So I think that Gordon Tallock was absolutely right. But the interesting thing is that Gordon Tallock implicitly, because the type of game he designed for this, is a game in which there is a benefit for society to put some limits. Sure. And uh, I actually enjoy in, in, in my book to pick a little bit on uh, Robert Barrow, because Robert Barrow defends restrictions in basketball and baseball, um, but not in everywhere else in the United <laughs> States. So uh, I don't understand why. In the United States, the only thing that is really non-competitive is sport. Uh, in Europe, the only thing that is really competitive is sport. Uh, in, in, uh, in Italy, uh, soccer, you have the first division, the second division. You are promoted or demoted according to performance. You don't buy your way into the NFL or the, the major league, etc. Here you buy the franchise, and once you're in, no matter how sort of uh, uh, incompetent you are, you stay there, which is completely un-American. 